All right, everybody, please put your hands together for Christine Knowlton, comedian. Come on. I can't hear you. Thank you. She knows what I'm talking about. This guy over here, he definitely needs a stiff drink. And the little lady next to him, she definitely needs a stiff one. So as you can tell, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Mostly because I don't have one. So how many minutes do I have here? Ten. You have to type ten. ten. Now you're down to eight, 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 eight and three quarters. Ten. That sounds so dirty. <laughs> like, I just want to go on the note, you know, um, the comedian that was up here earlier, Shana, Pussy Bones. Like, I definitely have to agree with that. Like, I keep it a lot. So sometimes I'm, like, so tight, it's like I close myself up. But, you know, it's like my, my fiancé just, like, literally rips me a new one every time. <laughs> but, so, um... So I realize a lot of times when I walk into the room, I forgot what I walked in there for. And it, did you know, if you walk into a room with a person at the same time, and you both forget what you went in there for, it cancels it out, and you never remember what you walked in there for. Okay, so it's like 2020. Um, so how many of you have New Year's resolutions? <laughs> And how many of you have broken them in the first month? <laughs> I hear you on that one. I mean, I make a plan to make no, no, no New Year's resolutions, so I can't lose on that bet. But anyway, I was scrolling through Facebook the other day, and I noticed this um, meme had come up. And actually, it was this great graffiti art on the side of a building. And it said, please stop using carrots as anal plums. And I'm like, I'm going to visit this town. <laughs> and I was thinking, I know everybody's like, I've got to eat healthier and everything. And you know, that, that, there's better ways of getting vegetables into you. But then I wondered too, it's like, what do they do with the carrots afterwards? I mean, carrots are great for, you know, eyesight, but that's only if you eat them. And I'm sure if you bought a carrot up to your eye after that, you'd just get pink eye. <laughs> That's just me. I mean, I guess the moral of the story is don't shove things up your ass that don't belong there. Make sure there is a handle because this has happened before. So, um, I like to get a little intimate with my audience. So, um, who here is uncircumcised? Any, oh, I know you're uncircumcised. Uh, you're uncircumcised? You're not? No. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't be doing this as a show and tell. But anyway, it's like, I love it, you know, it's like an uncircumcised penis. Have you ever just tried to jack one of those things off? You know, I mean, you definitely get in some wrist movements there. You know, and after a while, you know, his head pops up like it's Groundhog Day, and he's just like... <laughs> I mean, he looks like Uncle Fester. <laughs> She gets it. She's definitely drinking enough. <laughs> That's my kind of crowd. <laughs> Last time I told some of these jokes, I had great people to the left of me that were completely drunk. And then right down the middle, I had a whole aisle full of the Golden Girls. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to offend these nice people here, but I'm going to have fun over here. Which was great, because with the Golden Girls, I mean, they couldn't get up to their walkers fast enough to leave. <laughs> So I, I just recently got done doing two theater shows. Thank you, thank you. One was over at Dante Hall, which was the Laramie Project, which was with Unity's theater troupe, which now I'm going to plug them. Um, every Tuesday from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at Dante Hall, they have a free improv workshop, and it's amazing. So if you ever just wanted to come and try something new and just get down with it, That'd be great, there's like crap falling, it's great. So I have some ghosts behind me, which is like really cool. But yes, improv is great. So I did um, one of my shows there, and it was great, because um, during one of the shows, I got to second base with the director. 
It was right on stage. And I'm like, you know, I, yeah. And if, have you seen these guys lately? I was like, I can't, do, I can't wear low, low cut blouses at home because I won't get anything done. I just keep looking down. I'm like, damn, these are hot. So I end up, I end up, you know, binge watching something on Netflix, and I end up masturbating all day. So have you ever done that? <laughs> I mean, if you binge watch a 13-hour show, you know that's a great record there. Although I do like to call myself a marathon masturbator. I can go for six hours or six days. I was, gonna, I was going to make the comment when he said like a tight 10 and I'm like, ooh, a tight 10. I was like, I could definitely masturbate in 10 minutes. I mean, it would be a rush job, but it would definitely work. You know, so I don't know, um, are there any female squirters in the audience? Anybody? No, just me? Just... So, so, so Monday, everybody knows Monday's like the hardest. You have to get up for work and everything. But uh, my girlfriend is amazing. She's in Virginia right now. This poor guy over here is laughing so hard he can't even enjoy his beer. That's what I love. So anyway, it's like my girlfriend's out in Virginia. And, you know, she sexed, she sexed me like early in the morning. Like, and we ended up, like, masturbating till noon. And I was like, that was a lovely way to start a Monday. Now, I know whenever we get together, um, we always have to go to a hotel room because we're both squirters. So we, we just add on to the stains that are already in the hotel rooms. So, um, anyway, it's like getting down, you know, getting down and dirty. Um, as you can tell, like, I'm a really kinky person. If that hasn't shown yet. You know, I've got a few favorite kings, you know. I really love being spanked. Being spanked is the best. I mean, who loves being spanked? Woo! Woo! A couple people in the crowd. You must have grown up in the 80s like I did. Where getting in trouble got you spanked, and then the rest of your life is like, ooh, do it harder, daddy. Yes. But like a whole, I like a variety of ways of being spanked. You know, like a riding crop is great, but a ping pong paddle is the best. I mean, it, it, he knows, he knows. Now, if you haven't broken a ping pong paddle over someone's ass, you're not doing it right. I was hit so hard with a ping pong paddle that my neighbor actually called the cops because she thought it was gunfire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fantastic, I love it. Now don't, don't fall off your seat there. <laughs> Unless you're wearing a medic alert bracelet. <laughs> That'd be one hell of a way to go to the hospital though. <laughs> it's like, so I was listening to this girl and she got really kinky and I just fell off the seat. And here I am. Here, <laughs> just don't land on a wine bottle because then that's a whole other story. That always reverts back to stop shoving things up your ass. <laughs> But going back to what I was um, saying at the beginning, you know, with the carrots, like stop using carrots as anal plugs, I, I thought about for a long time, I was like, well, how else are they going to feed the rabbit? <laughs> I love the delayed reaction. You know, people shoving gerbils up there. Why not rabbits? You know, it's more fun that way. <laughs> you could be a magician pulling them out, you know? <laughs> So yes, um, I, I'm definitely a theater person, and um, I do I do shows like all the time. And actually, this is a pretty classy place that I've ever performed in. I mean, I'm so used to performing at the strip club. I'm not kidding. I wish I was. I wish I was. The last time I performed at the strip club, I was actually dressed as a nun. So if you can imagine this whole routine in a nun's outfit, it's really messed up. So I've performed in places that are strip clubs or that used to be strip clubs. I'm also available for private parties. If there's a pole involved, I'm definitely in. Or the pole's in me. Either way, we ought to have a lot of fun. But I have to say, you know, performing at a strip club is totally different. 
you know, I loved walking up on stage and they had the black lights and everything. So I would always, you know, check myself for cum stains before walking on there. Which was <laughs> great but yes I would walk on and everything and the first time that I ever performed there I was ready to go up on stage and my skirt was tucked in my pantyhose <laughs> luckily another comedian who was there bought her mom to the strip club and she fixed my skirt before I went on but everybody had seen anyway and I ended up being the employee of the month for like three months now <laughs> Isn't it great, you know? It's like, I love the way that they work the pole. Like, they really get there. Like, there was this great one. If you just backed into it, I was like, you know, if I back into that, my ass would probably swallow that pole. <laughs> and there it goes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I recently started doing a podcast. How many of you are familiar with podcasting? Oh, awesome. Awesome podcast. Oh, <laughs> hey, Shanna. She's awesome. She's the one that bought her mother to the strip club. <laughs> She's actually amazing. Um, we do a lot of comedy together, and we do theater productions as well. But anyway, so I started podcasting. And my podcast is Beauty and the Beast. So if you go to beautyandthebeastshow.com, you'll be able to listen to us. It's um, me and my um, friend Mark who's an ex-comedian. He stopped being a comedian because um, comedians stopped being funny. <laughs> and I thought I would like prove him wrong. <laughs> but he's come out to like all my shows and supporting me. And he's great with that. So we're doing these podcasts and it kind of turned into um, a confession type thing. Like where I talked about my first foursome. Yes, how many of you have had foursomes? Like four people at the same time. Not four individuals, but four. Yeah, he knows. This guy right here, see, he definitely knows. He has four fingers at a time. See me after the show, sir. We have to talk about it. But so, yes, I went on um, talking about my first foursome, which it incidentally happened at a Renaissance fair. I won't mention which one it happened to. But um, there was this guy and his wife, and they eyed me for quite some time. So we would spend the days together. He would escort me around the Shire. I'd go shopping with his wife. And then one time at finale, this is like where everybody sits down and there's music. There's like a whole day's end theme going on. And so we start doing things. And he's under my hoop skirt. I'm on top of him. His wife. His wife had this dragon that sat right between her boobs. And when she pulled it out on the other side, there was a dick on that thing. So she starts masturbating. And then her and I start kissing. My friend, yeah. Katie, my friend Katie starts coming over. And she's like, what the hell are you two doing? Because it's definitely obvious. So we're out in public doing this. So I pulled her onto my lap so it wouldn't look you know, so obvious what we were doing. And at the same time, my hand slipped down her skirt. So now we have a foursome going on. And like, it just got crazy. And yes, if you, if you ever go um, to a Renaissance fair, uh, yes. <laughs> These are things that actually happen. So I told that story in this podcast. And my friend Brian listened to it. And Brian only knows me through cosplaying. I don't know if you guys know what cosplaying is. Anybody, any nerds in here? Okay, there we go. It's pretty much when you, okay, it's pretty much when you put on a costume and um, you just have fun. So he's listening to it and I was like, so what did you think? And he's like, oh my God, my virgin ears. I was like, how did you not know about this? But anyway, um, we were talking about things earlier and somebody commented on um, what a nice necklace that I have. It's this nice bird, um, yes, it's a swallow. I wear a swallow around my neck because I don't. But let me leave you with this one thing. Um, uh, do you know why I do stand-up comedy? Why? Because when I did it laying down, they called it prostitution. Thank you, and have a great night. I'm Christine Norton. Put your hands together for Christine. I have no idea that photos with dragons on them. <laughs> <laughs>